Welcome back to Cryptos R Us. I'm George. We're all George. So good morning. Happy Sunday. We are about to start a new week pretty soon. And today I want to talk about Jerome Powell and inflation and this dark secret that he's hiding about inflation. In fact, I would argue that even though he wants inflation to come down, he doesn't want it to come down too quickly. And I'm going to explain why. All right, let's get started. Smash up the like, subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit that notification bell to get notified of all my streams. Follow me on social media. Check out CryptoThrust.com and make sure you follow my other channels as well. Good morning, guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. For a Sunday, I'm actually streaming a little bit earlier. Uh, and I know a lot of you guys are anxious to watch your, your football. So that's why I want to do a little bit earlier. <laughs> Um, all right, so looking at Bitcoin right now, it's at 19,000, so not too much movement this week, uh, this weekend. Unfortunately, we're trending down a little bit. We're not actually holding. We're actually trending down and down and down. So this week will be interesting. But obviously, last week was not a good week overall. A lot of a lot of bad things going on around the world. I've been covering about this issue with currencies, with the DXY skyrocketing, and that is because currencies around the world, Europe, UK, Japan, Canada, everywhere, Switzerland, everywhere, uh, their currencies are tanking, 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 and causing the dollar to come up, show it's giving dollar strength, Right. And unfortunately, when DXY goes up, it's not good for markets. So you could see DXY right now is at 113 and it just continues to go up and up and up as everyone continues to buy the U.S. dollar and and bonds and treasuries. Right. Um, and, you know, that's that's really what happened last week. And it's, it's not a good situation. So we'll see if this week follows or will we see some kind of recovery because, man, if you're if you're in the UK or you're in Europe or you're in Japan or anywhere else, you are seeing your money really, really disappear, not just from inflation aspect, but from exchange aspect. It's it's debasing itself like by tens to twenties of percents within a matter of just weeks. So it's not a good situation overall. Also. Uh, what's not good is the fact that in the U.S. we're still dealing with prospects of recession. <laughs> Even though we are in a technical recession, uh, Fed Chair Powell and administration does not believe that we're really in a recession because of some of the economic numbers, right? So I've been saying this is a Fed-induced recession, People didn't quite understand that, but now I'm starting to see a headline saying, look at this, Fed endorsing a recession. Because that is the only thing the Fed can do at this point in terms of curbing inflation. There's not much else Jerome Powell can do about supply chain shock, supply chain issues, about war, about you know what's going on with currencies around the world. Well, maybe he does have a little bit of say in that. But there's a lot of external factors that he can't control. So what he's trying to control is suppressing demand. And we know that, right? So essentially, he's endorsing a recession by raising rates. But there is something else to this story, this, this secret. And I don't think a lot of people are paying attention to it. And, and I do think this plays into a factor because many people have come out, many very smart people, much smarter than me, that has been around the block for much longer, have noted that Jerome Powell has been very, very slow, very slow in terms of his rate hikes, even though we have seen markets affected and the, the fund Fed rate has gone up to about 3%. Many thought that it, it should be even higher. It should be at like 5 or 6%, that, that Powell should have raised the fund rate much sooner and has, should have been a lot more aggressive. So why didn't he go more hawkish and, and be more aggressive? Well, I think here, I'm going to try to explain. Take a look. First of all, I think a lot of you guys know um, the Fed 
holds a ton, a ton of treasuries and bonds and junk bonds. I mean, look at how scary that chart is. Uh, you know, from, from 2008, when we had that last real recession, yes, the Fed stepped in and bought a lot of bonds. But then, you know, and back in 2017, 18, 19, that's when they were trying to shed their balance sheet. Unfortunately, COVID happened, right? And then what happened from 2020 on? I mean, look at that. We the, the Fed went up from 2. 2. Point something trillion, 2.4 trillion to 6.2 trillion. So the 4 trillion that was minted out of thin air, where did it go? Well, uh, the Fed basically said we're going to buy $4 trillion worth of bonds and 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 that's what that's pretty much where it went. Okay, so the Fed uh, hold a tremendous, tremendous amount of bonds on hand. They're one of the biggest, I guess, holders of of assets, really, because a lot of the, those bonds are from corporates too, from companies that issued bonds on purpose just so that the Fed could buy them. But anyways, my point is this: so you know, we talked. To, we you hear about Jerome Powell saying, "Oh yeah, you know." Uh, we're going to reduce our balance sheet, right? But right now, it's not really going down. So there's consequences to to printing all this money and and utilizing to buy bonds where you have to pay. You know, uh, you have to collect sometime. But right now, there's there's just no no end in sight when when that's going to be collected. But besides that, um, besides just how much it was printed and and basically consumed, I guess, by the Fed. If you look at the U.S. as a whole, right, the, the national deficit and how much the, the U.S. actually spends and collects. So this looks at 2021. So the U.S. spent close to $7 trillion. This is outside the $4 trillion, okay, by the way. The $4 trillion is outside of this, but there's $7 trillion spent. And then the U.S. government only collected four trillion, so we're at a three trillion deficit, and that's just 2021. If you go down and you look at well, 2020, there was a 3.1 trillion deficit, uh, and you could see since 2020, it's it's been it's been way higher than before. Even though going all the way back to 2000, there has pretty much always been a deficit, but it's been skyrocketing, right? So just 2020 and 2021. That's already like six trillion, and then I don't know what it's going to be this year. Probably another two something trillion. So that's like eight trillion dollars right there, and that is why the U.S. deficit continues to go up and up and up and up, right? So not only are we in a deficit as a whole, as a country, but we also have all those bonds that that you know we have to pay interest on. So I was looking at it. I'm just curious, like how much do we spend uh, on interest alone? And the federal government is project, projected to spend $400 billion just on interest on the bonds that they have sold. Okay, so you do the math. There's a, there's a lot of deficits right now, right? <laughs> the, the U.S. government uh, it is burning through cash year over year over year. And how does the government try to recoup that? How, how does the government try to stop the bleeding? Well, there's only two ways. One way is to collect taxes and raise taxes, right? And, and the second way is to issue more treasury bonds. Those are the only two things that the government can do, right? It's actually just really that simple. But the problem is the treasury bonds, well, they can only issue so many, right? Just like everything else, you only have a certain amount that you can, you can issue, and if you issue too much, it drops demand and then people stop buying, right? And right now, other countries are buying by the boatload because the U.S. dollar is so strong. Um, but you can't just like dilute it just like everything else. So there, there, there's still like a schedule to it. And there's only so much you can sell. And also, you got to remember, because the U.S. does pay uh, interest on those bonds, that also limits on how much it can basically sell because eventually the interest is going to balloon up. According to this this website, the interest on bonds alone will jump to one trillion in the next like eight years. So you know, so yeah, that it just adds up, right? So 
yeah, there's only so many bonds the U.S. government can collect, uh, can sell. So how else can the U.S. government try to make up for some of the money that they have, that they they have promised and have spent and and continue to burn every single year? Well, through taxes. So one of the ways you guys heard about was well they're gonna to try to look at everyone's taxes more carefully. That is why, just not too long ago, about a month ago, it was reported that hey the IRS is hiring eighty-seven thousand new agents, right? So that that's not all at once. It's because over the next five to ten years, there's a lot of agents that's going to retire, so let's go cover a lot of those. But there's also like tens of thousands of new agents that will be looking at people's um, returns very carefully, or looking at their W, you know, W twos and and 1090s and all that stuff. So they're gonna look at people. They're supposedly the rich, but you know, it's not just gonna be the rich. They're gonna be looking at everyone and really making sure they collect every single dime, right? So that's one way. But going back to the Stark secret, I know I've been going in circles, but I'm trying to get to a point. The the other way, and this is the Stark secret from Powell, is, well, if price of goods and services and everything is high, including wages being high, guess what? There's more taxes to be collected, right? So if you, for example, a burger used to cost a dollar. I don't know what the food tax is, like 10%, wherever you may be, right? But, you know, next year, that burger is now $2. Well, the taxes collected from that burger has just doubled. Even though, you know, even though it hurts the consumer, because now we're paying a full dollar more for that burger, but you know who helps, who benefits from that? The U.S. government, because now the taxes they collect have also doubled. So this is one of the things I believe, one of the reasons and the dark secret that no one really talks about. A few people have talked about it and I, I, and I have read about it. But one of the ways for the U.S. government to kind of recoup all this that I've just talked about, right? The, the, the bond interest, um, all the printing um, and all the all the spending every year with new programs and whatever, right? One of the ways is to collect more taxes. And what better way is to keep things high, keep prices and services and goods high, so more tax dollars collected through like sales tax, for example, and income tax and stuff like that. So I think that's the reason why Powell is not super, super, super aggressive with his rate hikes. I mean, the other reason I do understand is if he's really hawkish on rate hikes, then it's going to crash the market. It's going to crash the market way more than it has, which, of course, he does care about. But I think the other thing, the, the, the real, the dark secret, is this is actually helping him recoup as much tax dollars as possible. Um, so there you go. There you go. So it's kind of all convoluted. I know. I don't know if I said that well enough, but hopefully you guys kind of get the gist of that. But I think that's a, that's something interesting to pay attention to. I mean, again, I've been telling you guys this, the more I learn about how the U S government works, how the fed works, how the treasury department works, how the IRS, it works and everyone in between and how, they're all running like the biggest Ponzi scheme there is. <laughs> U.S. just seems to run it better than most other countries right now, uh, which is why the U.S. dollar is stronger. But if you look at how this operates in every country that has a central bank, that that has monetary policy, that, that has deficit and has bonds, I mean, it's all run the same way. Every Every country has the same system and it's really bad system. <laughs> really, really bad. And that brings me to my point, Bitcoin. <laughs> this brings me to my point, Bitcoin, because the more you learn about how money really works, the more you really think, why are we participating in this game? We really need to get out, we really do. It's unsustainable uh, system. There's no way 
you can have you can have a country that continues to be in deficit and more in deficit and more in deficit and and think that they never have to pay it back the the debt and just the interest alone eventually will be so crushing you know it's really it's really uh it's really demoralizing if you learn about it. But brings me to my point. This is why there is a huge case for Bitcoin. Mike Novogratz knows it. Michael Saylor knows it. Everyone that really pays attention and kind of understands realizes that we need something better. And we already have something better. Bitcoin. Okay. Bitcoin doesn't go through all this stuff. It, it, it doesn't. It's already programmed. It's governed by code right there's no bad actor that can come in and say oh we're just going to inflate it by 40 percent within the next two years things like that doesn't happen so that is the reason why i remain bullish on bitcoin and i remain uh i you know my thesis for basically everyone around the world is to really learn about money and then truly understand why you want to be in bitcoin Besides making money with Bitcoin and besides having the greatest decentralized network that we have. But the other huge reason is money itself, the system, is really broken. And that's why we need to turn to something better like Bitcoin. All right. So there's that. Um, and, uh, you know, of course, I've talked about Michael Saylor. He still thinks that Bitcoin is on its way to 500000 I don't disagree. I think it's just going to take some take some time. It's not going to be that fast, but it's going to take some time. Um, but as more and more people are learning about Bitcoin, this is what's happening with the price, even though short term, I know it's bad, but this is looking at the average four year price of Bitcoin. And what is it doing just continues to go up and up and up and up. And the number of people that have a wallet continues to go up and up and up. And look at even 2022, even though 2022 is a bad year. The number of crypto wallets still jumped up by 7 million. So that's 7 million more people that's in this space that kind of understands why they need to be in something better like Bitcoin and blockchain and decentralization and all that stuff, right? And of course, the address is holding above one Bitcoin, which is very hard to do, not easy to do, continues to go up nearing 905,000. So think about that. If I, I don't think it's 905,000, it's probably half of that or a third of that uh, is accurate. But just think about it. Only about 500,000 people or you could say 300,000 people in the world that holds at least one Bitcoin. That is so little. I'm pretty sure that number is probably more like 300,000 people. So if you think about it, uh, okay, even being conservative, let's just say it's 1 million people. Just to have 1 million people out of 8 billion to only have one Bitcoin, man, we are still so early. So, so early. Wait until millions and millions of people or hundreds of millions of people truly understand what what the financial systems are, are really doing. <laughs> then they will turn to something better like Bitcoin. All right. Uh, last few things. Uh, I saw this. This has me concerned, honestly. I used to be very bullish on Coinbase. And I used to say, you know what? Coinbase stock, once they IPO, will definitely be a good hold because Coinbase is absolutely huge. I don't think they're going to go anywhere, right? But this actually has me really scared. And why? Well, we know there's a lot of competitors to Coinbase, including Binance. And Binance is absolutely huge, but they have their own division, Binance.us, right? It's kind of separated from Binance, but still has the Binance name. And Binance has decided to offer zero, zero fee trading, right? And it has worked out really well for them. In fact, if you look at this headline, Binance itself has volume that's larger than next 13 exchanges combined. Think about it. That includes FTX and Coinbase and Hoibee and all the big players that you, you hear about. 
Binance has more trade and volume than all of them combined. That's how big Binance is, which makes me wonder how like some, someone like FTX has so much money. I get Binance has so much money. How does FTX has so much money? They're nowhere close to the size of Binance. But anyways, going back to my point about Coinbase, Coinbase, their their new COO uh, Emily Choi says, yeah, we don't have, we don't we don't need to go to zero fees. You know, we have we have our own we have our own benefits. Uh, we feel no pressure to change. Uh, users inherently value the security and ease of use that we talked about in the suite of services. So they're willing to pay for the premium offerings. Do they really have more security than say Binance? And do they really have more ease of use? I know that, yeah, the Coinbase app is still probably easier to use than Binance app, but Binance app isn't that difficult either. And that ease of use can be changed very easily. So, I mean, to me, the competitive advantage to Coinbase is dying. And I don't know if they have any competitive advantage anymore, outside of just being operated in, in the U.S. But this has me really scared. Like, if they're so bravado about this right now, um, I, I don't know if they can survive. I mean, th this really has me kind of rethinking my stance on Coinbase because there's there's no reason to think, like, say, Binance.us or any other exchange in the U.S. can't overtake Coinbase. I mean, they really don't have any competitive advantage. And don't tell me about the security and all that stuff. I mean, that... It's about equal everywhere. So I don't know. I, I, I just have I just have my doubts on it. Um, all right. And then lastly, this has nothing to do with inflation and all that stuff, but it has to do with with a major big country. And this is just rumors right now. I don't know what's actually happening, but I think this is important to pay attention to. So there's a ton of flights canceled um, in China specifically Beijing, uh, 6,000 to be exact, and rail services are suspended. So rumors are there's like a coup going on right now that the, the main general of China has put President Xi under house arrest and that he is the new leader of the party. Supposedly that that is being swirled around since yesterday to today. And no one really knows if this is true but you know what? If this is really the case, and say President Z is is ousted with this new general, that that can really change things. You know, so far China has been really has been really focusing on you know growing their economy, becoming a world power, right? Financially, not necessarily military wise. And also they've been, you know, they've been, even though they're kind of buddies with Russia, they, they've been keeping quiet and not really coming out and saying, oh, yeah, we're going to support Russia, right? But, you know, things can change after this. But again, I don't know if this is true. But if it is, it's, it's a huge, huge development. Could go either way, All right. So I just want to mention that, and we'll see. I'll keep track of it for you guys. All right, guys, that is it. Let's do some uh, let's do some Q and A. All right, I hate this mute thing. I always forget to turn off the mute. Um, yeah, I appreciate the support. Looking through the looking through the the comments, some people say I got it wrong, and it could be there, there there's a lot large holes 
in terms of how things are are constructed and I still need to learn about those holes. I mean, there's still a lot of major things. Um, but ultimately, the more you learn about how money works, the more you learn about how financial system works, the more you don't want to know <laughs> and the more you want to turn away. I was I, I was actually talking to a I was actually talking to a neighbor of mine recently, and uh, he was arguing that um, you know the 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 money printing um, doesn't matter that the U.S. government can print unlimited amount of money, the Federal Reserve can buy unlimited amount of bonds and treasuries and and. Uh, it doesn't matter how much deficit the U.S. government is in. Doesn't matter how much interest we have to pay, right? The U.S. government continue to to print as much as we need. If we're in a deficit of three trillion this year, we just print three more trillion. If we're a deficit of three trillion next year, we'll just print another three trillion, and we can keep printing until that trillion is, you know, infinite, right? And I'm like, you can't possibly think that that is a good system first of all and that's sustainable right i i didn't have i guess i don't know we didn't argue about it that much but i'm like you can't possibly think that 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 that's good right or sustainable you can't just have one hand print out unlimited amount of money and just give it to the other hand like you can't just do that you have to collect it back somehow there has to be some kind of consequence to having all this debt that you have to pay back and you have all this interest that you have to pay every year um, on top of everything else. <laughs> you know, it's just, uh, yeah. Your neighbor's not right, let me talk to him. I know he's not right, but it, it's hard for me to convince him of that because just pay attention to what has happened over the last two years. And then you go all the way back to the last 10, uh, 12 years or 14 years to 2008. It has been happening. Man, so far, thing, it's like business as usual, right? So the UF deficit went from $10 trillion to $30 trillion. Has anything changed? <laughs> you know, so it's like it's hard to make that argument against people because they're like, well, it's, it's still operating just fine. The U.S. is still so strong. And look at how much other countries are struggling against us. So I'm like, I guess. <laughs> Super Healthy says, uh, I, I agree. Just keep printing. It can never be collected. He's correct, your neighbor. I hope he's not correct about that. Um, <laughs> Inner Dinosaur says it's looking a bit iffy here in the UK. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't mean to spread so much fear about countries overseas, but, you know, just yesterday I was looking at the U UK pound or sterling versus the dollar. I mean, look at that. That that's not a good sight since you know August. It was 117 down to 109, and uh, and markets didn't open yet. So this coming week, we'll see if that continues the downtrend. I mean, just think about it. Your 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 one pound uh, is is losing 10 percent every every week. It's lost how many percent over the last few months, right? So, yeah, that's not that's just versus the dollar. I'm not even talking about inflation. So, you know, stuff like this is making the DXY skyrocket, and the euro is is worse. Euro is now 0.97. I mean, it is not good, not good at all. Is XRP on KuCoin? Yeah, any of the foreign exchanges have uh, XRP. So KuCoin, um, 
MEXE, my new partner. Uh, there's a lot, a lot of the foreign exchanges offer XRP if that's your thing. Chainlink, your thoughts on Chainlink the next few hours? I'm not gonna look at the four hour chart, uh, but I do know Chainlink does have that new uh, SmartCon conference that they're hosting. So maybe something good could come out of there. We've been hearing about this bridge thing for quite a long time. I don't know if uh, that's going to get done anytime soon. So, I mean, overall, I still really do like Chainlink. I think they're going to do well in the future. Uh, what is on your computer? Do I need that? I, what are you talking about? Japan and ECB to dump U.S. Treasuries. You know, that that's the thing. Scooby-Doo, that is flexibility in monetary policy, not the unlimited printing. Quantitative easing is not the same thing. Uh, I forgot what you're responding to. Genia needs more XRP. <laughs> Join the XRP army. Maybe. Maybe. Cosmoverse today. They're releasing the Atom 2.0 white paper. Yep. I did cover that yesterday. It's going to be for the next few days until the 28th, I believe. Whenever I join midstream, it won't let me start from the beginning. I think it only goes back so far. I don't know. Other other live streams I join, I could go back to the front. Maybe because my live streams are so so long. Maybe that's why. One thing's for sure: if you have dollars, you could buy other currencies pretty cheap. Yes, that is true right now. But would you want to? Because they're all still going down versus the dollar. Right now, the shirts play is to buy the dollar as uh yeah uh, i'm looking for that word as as bad as that sounds i guess uh with everything that we've been talking about with you know inflation with endless printing and all that stuff and the fact that the fact remains that the dollar is still the surest play right now that just sounds really wrong I don't know if you saw the big red candlesticks in DXY. That was Japan liquidating U.S. Treasury. Sovereign nation selling U.S. will drive the U.S. strength short term. I didn't see that. I didn't see that. Uh, let's see here. What what big red candlestick? This one right here? You know, I think the, the ultimate fear long term is... You know, whenever we have these kind of issues going on, the dollar gains strength, right? Regardless if it's like a war or a recession, a depression, you know, anything that's going on around the world, the U.S. dollar gains strength. And the U.S. Treasury bonds are like triple A graded, right? So we have never not repaid our debts before. But, you know, the, the, the fear, I think, long term is maybe one day um, – you know, something changes. Maybe there's a stronger currency. Maybe the USD becomes not the, you know, gets removed from the world currency, reserve currency, right? Uh, it could be any other currency. I don't know, the, the China yuan, for example. And then everyone buys bonds in the yuan and, and instead of the dollar. And then everyone starts dumping their bonds too. I think the fear is one day if, the world does not treasure the U.S. dollar or the treasury bonds as triple A anymore, and they just don't really want it, and they start selling it off, then the U.S. is going to be in real trouble. And then all the stuff that I mentioned today will really start catching up, and, uh, and bad things will happen. Hopefully that never happens, at least within my lifetime, so I don't have to worry about it. Hopefully that won't happen for another 
hundred years or so. Um, but, uh, you know, if it does, it's going to be an absolute disaster for the U.S. But I guess if it does happen in my lifetime, it's okay because I already know about Bitcoin. So I think most of us that are in Bitcoin, we understand kind of um, why we should be in Bitcoin and why we should continue to hold Bitcoin and DCA into Bitcoin. So... U.S. is backed by oil. That's not possible. People stop using oil. I mean, it's it's already starting. It's not going to be we're, the world's not going to be relying on oil forever. I mean, we're starting to transition to EV, right? Very very slowly, but hey, who knows? Another fifty, a hundred years, maybe we get off significant amount of oil. And plus, you know. Plus, this whole thing about oil, you're already starting to hear it, that the Middle East is starting to take rubles and digital, or not digital, yuan, instead of USD. I mean, it's taking both, so or triple all of them now, right? So it's starting to happen because of the war. So it doesn't mean that you could only buy oil with USD anymore, right? Same thing with the SWIFT system. I mean, everything is entwined with the USD, but because of the whole war thing, starting to cause like alternatives to come up mike reinhardt hey appreciate it do you see xrp reaching one dollar by the end of the year no i don't see that um i chart xrp before if it continues to go up it'll probably hit like 70 something cents you know, I, I I could see that happening. Going to a dollar, probably not. But you know what? If the XRP army all like FOMOs in, right, and, and drives it up, yeah, maybe. I take that back. It could. It could. There's a there's an off chance it could happen. It could. Because I, I don't want to uh I don't want to uh, underestimate the XRP army because we saw what happened in twenty seventeen and twenty eighteen. Uh, hope you're having a good weekend. A, I am. Appreciate it. Uh, hopefully you are too. Uh, Miles Maddox, how come you missed me a super chat? I didn't miss it. I had no idea what you were talking about. By the way, the pounds is likely to crash further on Monday morning. How will that affect crypto? It's not going to affect it in a good way. Let's just put it that. If the pound continues to crash tomorrow, it's going to drive DXY even higher. And uh, and we don't want this to go higher. But it just seems to just, just look at that. I mean, it's just nonstop. Ian says, I swapped all my euro into USD last week before it completely tanked. Got lucky there. Well, it sounds like it. But even though last week it was already low. But better than better than than today. And euro may crash more. I'm curious your position on USDT. I mean, I don't trust it. I use it when I have to, but I hold most of my stable coins in in others like USDC and BUSD, and and I try to stay off USDT as much as I can. Uh, I have a fever. The only <laughs> prescription is that. No, guys, I can't overplay it too much. You know, it's a it's a hidden secret. It's the best weapon I have um, for XRP. Um, so I, I can't I can't over I can't overplay it. 
only only when only when XRP is pumping or dumping can I show it. Or when I talk about some kind of XRP news. Can you please unban my other account, same username? If I banned you, it's because you deserve it, unfortunately. Is I don't just ban anyone. So, unfortunately, no. Have you seen gold crashing to double top when Peter mocked BDC for crashing from his double? I mean, gold, you know, gold has not done very well. I think this, this proves once and for all that gold is not a good hedge against inflation. I mean, just look at that. All right, so versus one year, it's down. And going back two years, it's down five years. Five years is up because uh, in 2018, 2019, it was down. But in 10 years, it's down. It's lower than it was 10 years ago. So I think this proves once and for all that people do not treat gold as a, as an inflation hedge. It's just... It just doesn't move. It just doesn't move. You know, there was a couple of stints uh, this year where it, it got to 2000, but that's it. And then it just stopped and it crashed with, along with everything else. Gold and silver market is highly manipulated. Well, so is everything else. Right now, Bitcoin and crypto is manipulated too. There's whales that's driving things up and down. Like what happened with Ethereum after the merge, right? Totally manipulated. Um, but the thing is, uh, Bitcoin, we know, is just a better, better asset. And as more and more people learn about like me, like learn about how money really operates. And I mean, people know that you just need to be in something better. Right. And, and I think age plays into it too. Like there's no one that is my age or younger that ever talks about gold. It's like, there's just no way. I just don't see any of the newer millennials and whatever Gen Z's or whatever, you know, <laughs> people growing up that they're going to be excited about buying gold other than jewelry and watches and stuff like that. But uh, I just don't see them buying gold as an asset, as investment versus something digital like Bitcoin. All right, guys, I got to go. Let's end it overall. What do I want to say? I, I guess... <laughs> Hopefully, you know, hopefully I, today I talked about the hidden secret for Powell. I do think that is part of it is basically with everything that's going on with. Well, I don't have to re-explain it. I'm just going to say rewatch. <laughs> if you didn't, if you didn't, uh, if you didn't watch the beginning, rewind. I said a lot. Maybe I didn't get everything right, but I do think I got a lot of it right. And the more I learn about money the more it makes me want to get out and get into something better like Bitcoin. So go do your homework, my friends, and stick with Bitcoin and stick with me. So tomorrow, 8.15 a.m. Central Standard Time, morning stream. Make sure you tune in. All right? Smash the like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Take care. Have a good one. Bye-bye.